Um, got a little puffed out more than usual, but I loved it, man. Like I love the, it feels getting the full body done is it feels different or better, I may say, in a way. Mm-hmm. Hell yeah, yeah. It's like I think there's a certain reward to training, uh, the whole picture and not neglecting anything. Mm, mm, for sure, for sure. So, uh, what we're gonna go over is just that sixth day. So, trying to actually, I won't, I won't go through all of it together. We'll just break it down. So, first thing, day number six. Was there anything that you felt like was currently missing? in the days that you already had um in terms of workouts like yeah like so any exercises or any areas of your body that perhaps could have had more work yeah um i think my legs could have maybe done a bit more um a bit more uh, strength on my legs that's the part one of my body parts that i want to build up quite a bit um and other than that, yeah, I think I covered everything pretty well. Maybe I've never really done uh like abs in the past, like core in the past. So maybe incorporating a little bit of that would be good. Um, because I've never actually really done it ever. Um, except for the fifty crunches I do a night. <laughs> but yeah. that's not even to get abs. That's just because I, I told myself to do it. Um, discipline. Yeah, exactly. Um, excuse my client in the background, by the way, if you can, if you can hear. I can barely hear it. Nah, it's all good. Um, but yeah, I think, yeah, definitely legs is something I want to incorporate a bit more into my workouts. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. So for you and your body and your like demands, I kind of think explosive power and I'm thinking mm. uh, quads and hamstrings, but also working the lower leg, like the calves as well. Yeah. Calves is a, is a big one. I'm just doing calf raises at the moment. That's about it. Mm. Okay. Yeah. So plenty of room for adjustment it's there. It's yeah. Okay, sure. so that's sick. Um, I'll get our day six filled up with that stuff. And okay. then was there any technique questions that you had based on the exercises you were doing in the last couple of weeks? Um, upper body, I was fine. Like I was, uh, A lot of that stuff I was familiar with, kind of. Um, but maybe for like the squ- dumbbell squats and uh, most of the... I think it's the what's the one that stretches the hamstrings? Uh, the one RDLs. That the, yeah, I think it's those ones. I think I just need maybe advice on if I'm doing it correctly. Like sometimes I just feel like I'm looking a little strange doing it. Um, which I might not be. I could be doing it right, but you know, just a bit of technique uh, advice on that. Yeah, bro. I'll send you a t- I'll send you a DM to remind you to send me a video of those two exercises. And then yeah, I'll okay. I'll record a video back with some feedback on your video. Yeah, no, that that sounds good. That sounds good. And then so the cardio, getting puffed a little bit during the workouts. Yeah, yeah. I think it's because it's such a new kind of method to me by like yeah. doing supersets. I'd never really done supersets in the past. I'll do like my rep of uh, set of twelve, I don't know, um, shoulder press and then take a break for like a minute and then do the next set and then just so on and so on. So it was good, you know, getting puffed out. I liked it. I enjoyed it actually. Yeah. So you felt a big difference in your training because of this superset and new way of doing things. Yeah, exactly, man. Exactly. Like each workout I did, I'm like, wow, like, you know, I'm getting puffed out every single, every single one. Like by the end of the, I'll finish the, um, the set or what is it? And then take that minute break and I'll be puffing. I'll be like, shit. And then I'll time it for like, you know, what what else? I think it was like a minute and a half or whatever. And I'll be like, damn, like, I have to start already. <laughs> like, like, usually a minute and a half is fine, but I was like, shit. Like, I have to go for another one, but I was like, okay, cool. You know, this is this is what uh Mr. Ethan gave me, so I'm gonna do it, you know. Exactly, yes. man. And it, it's awesome. It's it's just as good, if not better, for muscle growth, but it's mm. also our cardio at the same yes. time. So a lot of people think they're two separate things and like break it down. Whereas mm. for especially someone that's trying to be an athlete, but also gain lean muscle. If mm. you do steady state cardio, you can actually be breaking yourself down rather than building muscle up. So when we combine it like this, which is a lot of work with mm. just a little rest period, a lot of work that picks the heart rate up, you can get that effect it's very, very, very easily. You don't need the cardio stuff to get puffed like go. you found out. 
sense. Yeah, no, that that makes a lot of sense, and I like the style of workout more instead of like separating the cardio and the and the uh, weightlifting, whatever. Which I do enjoy cardio by itself, but um, I think this one is also quite good as well. Yeah. So another thing, just to take note of, is for the first exercise of every day, I want you to make sure you stick to nasal nasal breathing. Nasal breathing. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so catch yourself and make sure you don't let so through the whole first set the rest period the second set the rest period the third set make sure you're nose breathing through that entire first exercise it'll actually be quite difficult but this is the fastest way to improve that cardio capacity right okay so after that maybe after a couple of weeks you'll start to see some improvements of uh of cardio and stuff like that very quickly and then you know those pick up basketball or soccer games you play you just yeah, yeah. won't be as puffed you just like wow. you'll find yourself you'll see everyone else kind of like panting and really struggling for the breath and you'll, yeah. you'll be fresh you know like you just started yeah that's a good that's a good method let me try that so even so what if i'm like doing quite a long uh say if i'm playing a whole football match or whatever um can you nasal breathe through the whole thing or like, could you at least try to or? So I did, I did a very slow 10K a while back. Well, it wasn't very slow. I did a moderate pace 10K a while back, mm -hmm. nose breathing. And that's about, that was probably 50. No, that was probably about an hour and 10 minutes of nose breathing. And that's, okay. mm -hmm. that's after a lot of training though. So with a yeah. whole football game, what the practice would be is naturally you're going to start mouth breathing at some point because the situation or the rapidity, the speed of the game is going yeah. to get you puffed, but it's the practice of becoming aware and bringing that back to nose breathing as fast as you can. And something like the gym is where we'll mm. extend that long tolerance. Like for now, it's just the first exercise of the workout. Then we extend it to all of your workouts then we extend it to your cardio. Then we extend it to like your performance days. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. Now that, that makes sense. Okay. That's cool. Mm. cool. All right. Um, and then just in the feedback you gave me last week, that's you rated cool. yeah. your confidence in training as a three out of 10. That's Do you remember cool. that? Three out of 10. No, no, I don't remember. So confidence as it like in terms of, uh, like how confident I am doing the exercises or I believe yeah yeah I that that was the question I'll just I'll pull it up see if uh, this one rate your confidence uh, in training practice or competition this week right I think it should have been higher than that I don't know if that might have been a mistake unless maybe at the time I was referring to maybe just learning the new exercises but I think yeah no, I was pretty I was somewhat confident for the yeah new exercises. I figured it was a familiarity with the new exercises sort of thing. Yeah, it possibly might have been that. can't even remember. <laughs> you mentioned checking your to-do list as well. That's great. Yeah, man. Yeah. I always write down my to-do list, but sometimes I'll, I won't check it during the day. At the end of the day, I always check and I'm like, shit. Like, I know sometimes I could have done some of those things. Um, the... How do you store it? Do you store it on your phone or on a notebook? I've been trying a different mess. Like for the past two years, I've been doing it on like a small notebook. Um, but then I realized after like I did it for I was consistent for the first year. Um, and every night, even even to this day, like I still write it down the night before, but I won't check it as consistently as I used to. So now I've moved to my phone. Um, and like I have like a to do list um on my phone that I just check every once in a while. Um, but now another method I've tried is like, I've got a whiteboard in my room, which I write everything down on that whiteboard. And for some reason, I remember better when I write it down the whiteboard, even though the whiteboard doesn't come with me <laughs> everywhere I go. So it's weird. Yeah. What do you think you could do to get better at remembering to check it? I don't know. I think I'm in and out of the car a lot during the day. So maybe every time I hop into the car, I can just check my to-do list, I reckon, maybe. Yeah, that'd be a great way to do it. And uh, do you store it in your car? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's in my car. It's in my bag, in my car. Yeah. The, the, I think the best way I found is to make it easier and to make it like force, force us 
to check it. Mm. If you have it sat on your driver's seat every time you get in the car, then you have to move mm. it out of your way in order to sit down. Yeah, that that is a good method, actually. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That way you see it when you get in. Yeah, that's true. That is true. Yeah. yeah. Or even just on the stick shift, like um right by your gears and stuff, or underneath the handbrake. So you have to move it every time you leave the car. Mm. Yeah, that's, that's a good that's a good one, uh, to be honest. Um because it's a small little block and just chuck yeah. it there if I, if it's no yeah. it's in my way, I think I can move out of the way. It's enough for yeah. sure. For and sure. you mentioned you mentioned like doing busy non-urgent tasks yeah. instead of the actual important stuff yeah 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 so that's what i'm doing at the moment like i tend to gravitate gravitate towards like the stuff that is not that important like it still needs to be done but it's not it's just the easier task i guess so yeah. now because i read it in a book that i just finished reading i'm about leadership and stuff and it gave me this template where there's like four boxes in the first box top left it says uh urgent the next box is uh, urgent, but what is it? Okay, urgent, and then there's urgent and important, and then there's non-urgent and important, and then there's, fuck, <laughs> i got to remember it. Is that the seven habits of highly effective people? That's where I probably knew it from before, because I did recognize the template, but now nah, this book was called um, The Act of Leadership. Nice. yeah. And I think what I found useful was Grant Cardone says he always does the hardest thing first because mm. it, either you get it done and you've already achieved the biggest, most difficult part of your day or mm. you move on from it. Either way, you get to win because you no longer have to do the hardest thing or you've mm. achieved the hardest thing. No. You know, once oh, I heard that, I was just like, might as well get it over with yeah 100% bro that's a realization I came to recently as well after reading that book I'm like yeah definitely there's big benefits of doing the hardest thing first because the mm. easier thing you can do it whenever you need to you know what I mean and it's, it, it works better that way you know what I mean so yeah, yeah. alright so so in terms of your meals just looking at the food that you've been having um, mm. one thing where I see the easiest room for improvement would be yeah. a bit more of a protein source with your breakfast Okay. So yeah. um I the the breakfast bowl looks like it works fantastic for you, but adding mm. something like a Greek yogurt or some eggs to it as well, because oats can be high in protein, but they're low in bioavailability. So that protein one gram of protein doesn't just equal one gram of protein. It's different from the different sources of protein. For example, uh, okay. eggs are a lot more, the protein is a lot more utilized than the protein from tofu per se. It's about the mm. body's ability to break it down and actually convert it into what we need for building muscle. Mm, okay. Right. So just adding a bit of eggs. Okay. No, that's, that's cool. Um, yeah. And then just keeping keeping the oats and everything there yeah, should be fine as well. Right? Yeah, definitely for now. I'd just add... Yeah. So right now the ratio is pretty high in carbs to protein. So just mm. changing that, increasing the lever on the protein side of things a bit. Right. Okay. Right. right. So a bit more eggs um, and a little bit less oats. Okay. You don't even have to know because you're, you'd be looking to stay around the same weight. So you don't have to decrease um, okay. the other side. You might, if you're feeling too full, but uh, mm. it's it's more about the addition rather than the subtraction. <laughs> that's not a focus, but you could if you need to. Okay, no, that's cool. What about wheat bix? Because actually, the the past week I've been sending you those pictures of oats. Oats is actually not my regular. Like it's usually the same same thing, but with the wheat bix. It's just that we didn't have wheat bix in the house, and I <laughs> didn't uh -huh. see the buying buying them at the shops. But um, yeah, usually wheat bix is what I opt for. <laughs> Yeah, grains in general can be quite difficult to digest. And like, if it suits you, but you kind of mm. have to listen to how your body responds. Like if you notice mid-morning sluggishness or if you kind of have an irritated gut and like your shits are inconsistent or um, you get stomach pain, that can be quite common. But wheat in general, because that's all it is. It's like processed wheat there's not much content to it. It's kind of mm. like 
a filler or a carrier of the milk and the berries and stuff. It's just, no. it's not really bringing much to the table. Uh, okay. Okay. So what, what would you recommend? Say if it wasn't oats or wheat beets, um, is there anything else that you would like put on the table though? Or? So for you, uh, Eggs any way you like is a really good way to start the day. Uh, getting yeah. in, you could still get your carbohydrates in with a smoothie, but just avoiding grains a little bit more. So you can have the same fruit, the same milk, just with without the grains getting in the way. That can speed up your digestion and allow things to be able to be used a little bit uh-huh. more. But if you're not feeling the ill effects, like it's just something to monitor with the grains. If you actually feel great from breakfast, and for example, you'll do better with carbohydrates than I do, then that's not so much of a concern. There's alternatives that you can try. Even like the chicken and rice you have for lunch or dinner sometimes, having that in the morning again, or a variation of that with the eggs could be quite good. Yeah, cool. okay. Ah, man, thank you. That's, that's good. Yeah, um, awesome. And then with, so like blank carbohydrates, basically the same thing I just said about breakfast is we kind mm. of always want to have a protein source with whatever you're eating. Yeah. Just for two reasons. Firstly, if you're starting the day on the carbohydrate side of things, uh, whatever we start the day with, our body sort of sets itself up to process for that day. So if we start quite carb heavy, our body prepares itself to run off of carbs all day. Whereas Mm. increasing the protein or fat, our body prepares to tolerate that a little bit more. So just starting the day can be quite important. And then hitting enough protein in your day. If if, If you always have three meals a day, but one of those Mm. meals, you skip your source of protein, you're basically slashing your protein by a third every day. Right, okay, just by skipping that one one meal of protein. So ultimately, we could increase your protein intake by 33% by just never forgetting to include protein with every single meal. Mm. Okay, Uh, that's a good two. All right. And then... um, Dinners, bro, look fucking awesome. Look fucking on point. Mm, nah, nah, dinners, dinners are pretty good, man. I like, I like my dinners. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And then um, with steaks and everything. I've been eating quite a lot of steak recently as well. I, we take, forgetting to take pictures, but the other day I had steak for lunch, steak for dinner. Was, yeah, pretty good. Yeah, bro. Yeah. Um, so do you have scales at home? Yeah, yeah, we have a scale. Yeah. Nice. Okay, so uh, action steps. So today's the 7th. On the 14th, I'll send you another check-in form. That was so helpful. That gave me heaps to actually implement with you. And like that was what I based this call off of. Um, Uh And then on the 21st of Feb, we'll have your next uh, Zoom call. But in Mm. between now and then, especially for the next seven days, if you could weigh yourself in the morning, every morning, Every morning in the morning, okay. Yeah, I can do that. Perfect, bro. Do uh, was this helpful today? Hundred percent, bro. I like the way you presented and everything, man. And just the insights that you gave me, you know, in terms of diet and all that stuff, man. Helpful, very, very helpful. Um, I'm already thinking how I can take it, uh, take it into like my workouts tonight and um and tomorrow, man. So appreciate that. Hell yeah, dude. Do you have any other questions? Anything else you need clarifying? Um, in terms of workouts, I think the past week, I think increasing maybe the workouts to maybe five a week or something like that. Five, six maybe, but I think maybe five. We can start with five for now. Nice. Um, just in terms of in terms of time. Um, and then yeah, just more leg based uh workouts or same same amount of upper body, but just including more with more legs in there. Um. And then maybe some more athletic type movements, or we can build we can build into that later on, or whatever yeah, whatever right. it is. Yeah, that's yeah. definitely the way we're trending: is building yeah. relevant muscle and like muscle that's applicable to real world situations. Mm. Okay, no, that's that's good, man. Hell yeah, bro! Um, 
I'll let you get back into business, let you get back to the busyness. <laughs> um, man, I was enjoying this call. It's a good break from the, from the, from the busy life, man. <laughs> I feel the same way, bro. It's good to catch oh, yeah. up. It's like nice. It's refreshing with someone on the same wavelength. hundred percent, bro. hundred percent, man. Nah, it's always good. But now nah, I'm looking forward to talking to you next. Yeah, bro. I'll catch you again soon. Have a good one.